Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. We have a pretty cool project we're going to talk about today. Uh, last week, Jacob from EVGA was here. We did a really cool live stream, gave away a whole lot of prizes. Hopefully everybody was able to participate in that. One of the things that he showed off uh, was a very early pre-production unit of their hydrocopper water block that Alan's holding up here. Mm -hmm. Now, for some reason, we were able to convince him to leave it here for a couple of days to let us kind of mess around and, and play with it. Um, so what we wanted to do is, in a couple of parts here, is we're going to show you how easy it is to install a water block on a graphics card. Uh, and then we'll show you in a second part what the performance was and what kind of implications that leaves for the performance of the GTX 980. So we're going to go ahead here and do today is just basically show you the installation process. Alan's going to, you know, if we're in a different spot than we're normally at, it's because the overhead cameras over Alan, we're going to look at uh, the components that we have here and show you basically the process mm -hmm. of installing what we're looking at. Uh, in front of us, we have two different GTX 980s. Alan has the reference GTX 980. This is one of the ones we used in our review. Um, uh, with the backplate. It's got a backplate on it, mm -hmm. and it's got the standard reference cooler. In front of me, we have the EVGA GTX 980 SC model, and it's the same GPU, it's the same board configuration. Uh, it does have a different cooler. Notice there's no backplate on it, and instead it has what we call that, like a, a, a midplate, if you will, something that goes between. Uh, it's basically what is making contact with the mm -hmm. memory and, and uh, power delivery mechanisms and all that uh, because of a different heatsink design in their ACX 2.0 infrastructure. Yeah, the, the heat pipe cooler on this only connects to the GPU, and then there's that plate in the center kind of sandwiched in there. That's what gets rid of all the other heat Okay. Okay. off all the other components. So the installation process for these two different cards is slightly different, but not really dramatically so. What we're going to go ahead and do is, is basically show you the process on a reference card, because I think that's what's going to be most popular and most commonly used out there. Yep. Um, but we'll mention as we go if there are any particulars on this. I mean, there's no backplate, and when you put this water block on this GPU, you have the option or, or not whether or not you want to continue to use the backplate. I think right. it looks good. I think it's neat. So you probably would. Um, so we're not going to show you how to set up a water loop. We're not going to show you all that stuff. We'll do that in the future sometime. This is basically just like, we've got a block, install, and see how it goes. Yep. Keep in mind, this is an early pre-production unit of the hydrocopper. Um, so some of the accessories may improve or, or change a little bit between now and the mid-October release time frame. Yeah, I think the difference just might be in what screws and other parts just come in the yeah, packaging. I so. I but so. I mean, the block should really be the same thing. The same. You, this should be the one you're going to get. So what are we looking at in front of you? All right, so GTX 980, okay. reference model, right? Uh, flip it upside down first. And we'll just, I guess we'll just dive right in. Yeah, go, um, just go ahead. First two screws, important ones uh, not to mess up. There's a couple in the center of the back plate. And don't get that confused with the three other ones right underneath the display port ports. Uh, you do not need to remove those. You need to remove the top or the, the center two. Those are the two that are actually attached to the heatsink assembly. The two that the are shroud ac actually, assembly. yeah, they actually installed to the shroud. And actually, uh, before I do that, I'll point out on this card, some cards will not have screws installed there. Yeah. So cards that have uh, aftermarket mm -hmm. core types uh, probably won't use those two screw holes at all. So you might not even need to remove those two. All right. All right, so those two are down. Right there, right there. Now the rest is just to remove backplate screws. Yep. Quite a few of those. Quite a few of those. I, I, we should say, I don't think the backplate's doing any particular cooling uh, process I, on no, this. I don't, just for looks. I don't believe there are style. even any thermal pads. I do um, like the idea of protecting everything on the back with a plate like that. You know, the, this card that's a little bit more exposed. Um, you know. Just less likely for you to accidentally knock something off of there yep. if you have a backplate on it. So. What's the name of this guy right here, Ryan? Is there an official name of it? Um, yeah, probably. I don't know what it is. <laughs> this is the plate that if you have multiple of these cards in SLI, you remove that plate. Yeah. It gives you a little more room. It's just more airflow for the card on yeah. this side of it. Gives so. you a little, a little bit extra space because this is where the fan would be sitting mm -hmm. on the card right next to it. So, And that's assuming that you have... If you're going to water cool your cards, cards, obviously not a huge concern. Um, yeah, for water cooling, honestly, I would put this plate back after just to keep the look cleaner. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, yeah. really, it's, you know, it's unless, you have, change anything. unless you have an air-cooled card right next to it, which I doubt. If you're going to water cool one, hopefully you're going to water cool them all, I guess. <laughs> I'm only water cooling 
the top card. I'm only going to water cool the secondary GPU in my system. Yeah. Doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. All right, so this is a lot of screws. It is. We're almost there, though. All right. So once you've gotten all of the smaller screws out, notice I haven't removed the four mm -hmm. GPU core screws yet, but all of these screws will let you get the back plate off. So there okay. you have it. All right. All right, now let's uh, screw all this stuff, kind of get out of the way there. Move some stuff up. All right, so all we have left here are these four screws, and then there's another two additional. Notice on the back plate here. This only applies to cards that had the back plate. There's these two screws here that go through the back plate and sort of extra support for the, uh, mm -hmm. just the GPU portion of the cooler. But don't forget there's two more on a different axis. So I'll remove those guys. And these are the larger screws that are actually holding the heatsink assembly onto the GPU itself. The ones applying the pressure. Right, and there are the there's, there's a little spring, spring in there. Mm -hmm. We actually, you could use the spring-loaded ones on the water block, but um, the instructions that we've seen on this one yeah. don't show that. They show them using their, your own screws. The screws that uh, would come with the water block. Yeah, screws that came with the water block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now this should be all of the screws. Just kind of double check before you go pulling. You know, go pulling on stuff. Yep. And also, there's going to be two power cables. Uh, one's a fan hitter cable, and the other one's for the lighting. All right. So now we'll just kind of. I would recommend just kind of easing the PCB back and forth a little bit. You wiggle relative. it back and forth some. We're trying to separate the thermal paste from the GPU, more or less. Yeah. You kind of get it started a little bit, a little bit of separation. Don't go prying up only on one end because you could crack the PCB and there and just kind of let go. Now, as we go to separate it, you'll notice that there are some cables there. Mm -hmm. So we need to get those apart. One of them is actually operating the fan. Yep, that's a four-pin. That's pin, the fan one, four and then another head. is for the LED on it. So yeah, the LED one on this card, we can actually just get the card upside down and get a decent grip on there, and there we go. Mm -hmm. So we have a card free of the, the factory reference, core. reference yeah. core. Now, what I usually like to do with these is there's going to be some, you know, there'll be some thermal compound remaining on the just from factory installed. I usually like to. Uh, take the thermal pads and transfer them back over. So on. these are the thermal pads, these kind of greenish yeah. items here. And notice we've got, most of them have stayed on the heat sink. We've got a couple that have actually stayed on the GPU itself. Mm -hmm. And I usually just like to keep them with what they came with because you never know, you might want to, you know, if you go to sell this card off later from a subsequent upgrade or whatnot, mm -hmm. if you have all of the factory pads back where they were, you know, also, we'll different easy. pads might be different thicknesses to accommodate different cooler configurations. Yeah, there are reasons why you would want to keep them with the cooler. Most of the water blocks actually come with a thinner set of pads mm -hmm. for, for the water block between the water block and the and the DDR. And there's actually the power no power delivery stuff. Yeah, power delivery stuff. There's actually no pad between the water block and the GPU itself because that's just going to be Arctic Silver or um, whatever thermal paste you want to use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm actually we're actually not even sure which thermal paste comes with. There will be, I mean, there is some that comes with it, with the water blocks, so. Right. Uh, all, right. all right, so there we go. Put this off to the side. Move that. Move that. Now we're going to want to prepare this uh, PCB for the water block, obviously, so we have to do some cleanup. So Ryan has these awesome alcohol wipes. Pre-moistened alcohol wipes. Pre-moistened alcohol wipes. Pretty much the best thing ever. Uh, which is actually a pretty good thing to use for this. Um, I recommend not just pouring alcohol right on your PCB. <laughs> uh, just in general. I mean, if you don't have these, you can just take isopropyl alcohol and kind of... Uh, you can use Q-tips, you can use... Um, just a paper towel mm -hmm. with some isopropyl uh, on it. Mm -hmm. um, you really don't need to be perfect about it, you just need to get the GPU yeah, clean. You're going to put more on it. Yep. All right, so there's that. Now, the directions... We can try the star pattern per the directions. Sure. Either way, <clears throat> there are many debates about the proper way 
to uh, install thermal paste. Uh, there are. Some people just put a big old glob in the middle. Um, that, that's my method. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's because, you know, you do this like all day, basically, so. It gets old. Uh, I usually do some kind of a plus pattern, just kind of go across a little bit. <laughs> the idea is you want to put it on there in such a way where when you go to push the water block against the GPU, you're not trapping air in the middle. Right. That's the, what you don't want to happen. So if you go out on some kind of a star or some kind of a plus or something like that, chances are you're not going to trap a bunch of air in there. That's maybe a little bit excessive, but it's probably okay. Get a little bit extra off. Sure. All right. Now, the other part we have to deal with now is thermal pads. So, water block, GPU. Now, they, uh, these should be the thermal pads that come with it, should be the packaging. Uh, this is kind of like just what was in the box before we. Uh, yeah, pre production arm, arm, stuff again. Yeah, before we arm wrestled the box away from, uh, away from EVGA. We've got some that are already kind of pre-cut, so we're just going to go with those for speed. Now, in the directions, they will more or less detail mm -hmm. where these pads need to go, uh, how they're broken up. Um, but I, I think looking at the reference design cooler, you'll get a pretty good idea of what components are important and necessary to be covered and cooled, yep. in addition to, obviously, your GPU. And there was a section... Uh, where some of these cards may not have extra mm -hmm. power circuitry there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if the pad is too big to cover it, I mean, you never know, you might want to put the same water block on another card that does have that. So I would kind of save the pad just so that you're yeah. able to, to cover that stuff, right? Uh, now we've got to cover all the memory blocks. All the memory. So what should we talk about while we're doing this? Well, that's what I was trying to think of. You know, the, the, again, the, the pre-production model that we have here um, may not be the final one. Like, for example, we'll hook up the LED light. The LED does not work in the prototype that we have. That's true. I was told. So um, we'll show you the installation of that because that may be the, the trickiest part, but only because of physical constraints. <laughs> yes, F uh, finger size constraints. Yeah. But, uh, uh, and again, that may be something that is a little bit easier in the production models. Maybe they give you a little bit more cable slack or something, but. All right. All right, so all your thermal pads are installed in the appropriate locations. Yep, now look what? good there. Uh, now here's the kind of tricky thing here. We're about to put this water block on. There is a power connector mm -hmm. for the LED lighting. Yep, see it up top there. Uh, now the idea, if I flip this around so it's kind of mirror imaged, it's supposed to go to this connector. So before you go even trying to line these cards up, you're going to want to make sure this is oriented in such a way where it's going to plug into that plug uh, the correct way yep. on the PCB. Now, the trick that I do for these kind, because you notice that there's really no slack Can't pull that out in that further. plug at all. It does not come out any further. I would imagine maybe on production ones, they might give you a little bit longer. I would hope so. Line there. I hope. We'll see. But if you just don't have any excess, the idea is you can't really get behind this thing. So I took a paper clip and slid it between the two hmm. wires. So it's basically just kind of keeping this guy above that level. Gotcha. Right? So that way, as we go to insert this, uh, and as we go to mate these together, it just kind of can, it, it's going to kind of force the plug to go in. Yep. Right? So I can get away with, just I'll do this so that the camera can see. You just kind of line these guys up. Make sure the plug's going. All right, the plug is started. Now really, but before I get, oh, did I lose the paper clip? I did. Yep. No you need a hand there? I'll just grab it differently. Mm. There. See, it's tricky even with the paper clip. <laughs> All right, so we'll line these guys up. And then push the plug together. There you go. It just went. Now to get the rest of everything together, I'm going to slide the paperclip out because this. We plug, don't want to keep the paperclip in there. You sure? No. Well, the well, plug the plug actually insets into the water block right. into the plastic. So 
And now for the rest of it, just make sure all your thermal pads are where they should be. Lay the card back down, and you should just be able to lay the water block on. Now this is kind of mostly lined up, but it's not all the way down because it's not this, flush because of the um, yeah, the outlet because the, the outlet outlet block on this one is kind of big. So I'm just gonna kind of grab the PCB itself. Now I'm just holding the whole thing as a unit, so it's all together. I can flip it over. And it, usually when I'm doing these uh, to deal with just the, the height the, restriction, just the height restriction. Yeah, I'll just put it on the edge of a table, right? Um, we'll kind of scoot this over a little bit in a second to get it on camera. But I can start for now by getting our back plate ready, because the back plate on this is unlike it was on the, on the reference core. Uh, the back plate is the other half of what holds the water block in most of the connection points. So you still have your four screws that are going to hold the main part of it to the GPU. Right. Right. However, you're also going to have these other screws that are holding the rest of the water block to it. Okay. All right. So we're going to go with the same screws. And we're going to lay this guy in place. I'm going to hold it so we can put it in the full frame. I can just put my hand underneath it so that we can... Uh, you can. I was trying anything. to think if we had something else to just kind of set it on. Yeah, let me get Give me the box. box. Yeah, we'll do yeah, that. Yeah, that box is the good. The box that came in. Yep. There we go. So I'll we'll set it on the box. Okay, and I'll grab... Get the screws out of the way. All right, so also notice on this guy, these four, there is nowhere to screw those screws into. Okay. All right, so the water box, the water so box simply does out. not, yeah, they're just simply not threaded. Uh, so you really, you just don't need those. Everything else, however, goes through the plate. Put that on in a second. So you can kind of get this started at least just aligned. Mm -hmm. um, I would just get maybe a few turns on a few of the screws on either end of the board. And why are you just aligning it now at this point? Uh, well, if you if you have the board a little bit missile or the the back plate a little bit misaligned, and you go and you fully tighten the first screw you go to put in, the holes might not be lined up on the other side, right? So you're just kind of okay getting a few of them started, just so that you know that everything is just kind of yeah. like in the right place, relative right place, right? Um, now there is in the in the instructions. Uh, there are these plastic spacers that for the EK instructions. Uh, where'd the fourth one go? There right it is. There. Uh, they only talk about putting them behind the four main holes for what's holding the GPU to the water block. Mm -hmm. All right, and they also have their own screws. So if you're going to use the plastic spacers, you're going to want to use their screws because if you use the ones with the springs in them, it's not really going to mate up against the plastic spacer the right way. Sure. Right. Yeah. So, this might be a little bit tricky because you're trying to work into a hole through the uh, through the back plate. Through the back plate, mm -hmm. and you don't really need to go crazy on how far you're tightening these screws. I'm not sure if there's an, any kind of a torque spec. Uh, or, I doubt it. I mean, basically, if you have a jeweler's type screwdriver, I would just say you know hand tight with that. Don't be adding anything else to get a whole bunch of leverage on it and r really gronking the screws down. Mm. Otherwise, you might you might actually crack the die. Mm. It is possible. Since Sounds expensive. That would be very expensive, yes, especially on a brand new 980, right? But the thing you are attaching to it is a solid piece of copper. Yep. Um, so it's not really going to give. Uh, PCB might give you a little bit of flex, but possibly at the expense, at the expense of uh, your shiny new GPU. Mm -hmm. All right, so rest of the screws. And now I can actually start kind of putting, some, on the rest putting, of the some, yeah, yeah. putting some actual torque on them and getting them tightened down. There's a couple other things you might run into as issues as you're doing this. Uh, first of all, again, reminder, don't be tempted to put screws in there. Otherwise, you're going to have to flip the card over and uh, get the screws out because there's nowhere for the, <laughs> those two to go in. Yep. That would be kind of annoying. Let's 
let's try. And there's a few places on the water block that the factory length screws, even with this back plate on, mm -hmm. like might actually be too long, like the factory ones. So let's see what they have included in their bags. There are some slightly shorter length screws. I don't know how good this will come across on the camera, but yeah, there is a little bit of a difference there, right? So it's just the difference in the depth of the uh, just how long the threads are, the threads and, and the and heat sink versus the uh, yeah the depth of the how heat sink versus this water block. Yep, and it's basically down to the threads of uh, how deep the holes were tapped into. Yep. Okay. So let's see if we can get away with. Yeah, it looks like we're not going to be able to use any of the factory GPU uh, screws in this case. Okay. We're going to have to go with the slightly shorter ones. Yep, and those work. Yep. Let's see if we can get away with it. Nope. Uh, and I think they're going to include two different length screws. If you had uh, this um, this GPU, for example, yeah, the EVGA card there, right, with the with its own aftermarket core and no backplate, those screws would be short enough if you were installing this block again without a backplate, mm -hmm. right? Um, just kind of another note there. We know because we did that. Yeah, well, this is actually the first <laughs> thing we did. But it's really down to just getting the rest of these guys in. And once all that's said and done. Pretty close. Yeah. Uh, another thing that might be an issue is that right here, you'll notice that the uh, reference core had a place right here where there was a screw hole. Mm -hmm. Right, it went all the way up to the leading edge here. Uh, not so much anymore, right? We have no water block right there. Sure. So there are very small nuts included and some very short screws included. So you can get really, oh, that one is actually too short. You can get a short screw in through the end hole there, put another on the back. And just kind of screw it in place. Just so the plate has something to... Uh, yeah, it basically just gives the, PCB. gives the plate something to hold on to, and it also holds this rear metal bracket firmly to the PCB. Uh, okay. Right? Okay. I, would, I would recommend putting that back, like you want screws there. Um, there is a threaded hole on the back side of the top end from the water block, so we're covered there. These are probably the two most important screws to to have installed here, because you will break something on the car just from installing and removing uh, mm -hmm. your cabling later. All right, so we're good on that. Put our back plate on, or our cooling plate, whatever the name. Yeah, is. I don't know. You know. And actually, our shorter screw is too short for that, so we'll go with a long one. All right. Uh, we got two down there. A couple more. There are a lot of backplate screws. I think the look it gives you, though, when, you're, when it's installed in there is, is worth it, as opposed to the bare PCB. All right, so now we should have... Oh, there's another one. There are a lot of screws on this guy. Okay. Now we have all the backplate screws. Those two appear to be not installed. There's, remember, there's no, right. no place to screw those into. And then what we're left with is, and actually this is kind of cool on this uh, water block, they give you six connections. Right. So what that, what that means is you've got two yeah. sets or three sets of inlet outlet. So depending on what your water cooling loop design is, mm -hmm. if you want to come out, you know, one at the top, one at the bottom, or vice versa, or both at the bottom or both at the side, you, know, you have that capability. Yep. And uh, you're able to go just from card to card very easy, right? If you yeah. had... If you had these in SLI, uh, that would of make course. things. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to have water cooled 980s, you're probably going to want several of them. 
So what we have so, are two uh, barbs and four plugs, essentially. Yep. The barbs, I believe you're going to have to get separately. Usually Maybe. for water blocks, yeah. uh, that's the case. We haven't seen like final packaging on, mm -hmm. on this guy. Mm -hmm. um, but And really, the, diff the reason there is that is some people like to use different diameter tubing, and sure. you, know, you have to use barbs specific for that. Um, you do have these four plugs that do, that do come with this, because that would be really annoying to have to buy the plugs afterwards. So you're able to just install these plugs in the holes you're not going to use. And you can get creative with how you're routing your coolant. I mean, you might actually only need to install two or three of these, because you might use the block as a T. Mm. Right? Some people have T's in their cooling. That is, it's actually another advantage of this, t this style block is that you wouldn't have to have T's elsewhere in your system. Hmm. Or Y's or whatever you want to call them. And this little Allen key is supposed to come with the kit as well. So there's those two. We'll install the other two on this side just for the sake of simplicity. And then when we're done with this, Ryan is going to proceed to try to overclock. Or overclock further. That is the goal. Yeah. For your barbs, make sure that there's O-rings on the bottom of the style that you're using because that's what this, uh, this style block is meant to receive. And aside from some snugging needed on the barbs, that's it. That's it, we're done? We're done. Took a while because all those screws for the back plate. But that's it. So now we have a water cooled GTX 980 ready to be hooked up into a custom cooled system of yeah. whatever your design happens to be, right? Uh, and um, that is with, this is the EVGA Hydro Copper water block. It's built by EK, so it's gonna be very similar to the EK models you can probably find online as well. Uh, EVGA said theirs will sell for somewhere around $150 and be available in mid-October, which is coming up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, but that was uh, a short little installation demonstration. If you want to see how to uninstall it, just play the video backwards, um, and it should be yep. it should be fine. And uh, I would take your reference cooler. Mm -hmm. Get if you saved your old box from your card that it came in, right? Kind of wrap it up in some plastic because these uh, pads tend to dry out if you just leave them out in open oh, air. Oh yeah, good point. Um, so I'd take this thing, maybe stick it in a big Ziploc bag. Um, and just kind of store it for if you ever need to put this back on. Very cool. Uh, check back again real soon, guys. We're going to hook this up to a water cooling setup on our GPU test bed and see how far we can overclock it and what kind of performance we'll get out of it. Thanks, guys.